Guten Abend, my sim racing friends. I have to admit, I have lost my ways and not uploaded anything in nearly four months because I've been busy playing Escape from Tarkov like a complete moron. I don't know if I have a mental breakdown or some sort of midlife crisis, but that's what I've been doing. I'm not even kidding. Let me show you some proof of my pointless existence. Account lifetime 77 days, of which I have spent a sensational 1200 hours online. If you divide those 1200 hours by 77 days, you'll get an average playtime of 16 hours a day. How my wife did not divorce me is a mystery to me. But now that we got out of the way why this channel is called Sick Games Entertainment, I can at least write this off as technical research. So one of the most requested topics on the comments before I quit my life apparently was audio. So today we'll talk about headphones, amplifiers, butt kickers and the dual sound card setup. Why I choose one over the other and perhaps it will address some of your questions or hurdles as audio in general may be a fairly complex endeavor especially for sim racers because we require the use of multiple sound cards at once in order to power the butt kickers. First things first, the choice of headphones. While the internet is full of recommendations, if you are in search of a good headset and not just headphones, you will quickly realize that the choices are not as endless as they appear and you should generally try to stay away from gamer headsets if you want good sound quality. Nevertheless, I broke this rule myself and in this video i'll explain to you why all products in this video have been out on the market for a longer period of time and should be available no matter which country you watch from as these products are popular and have many reviews already out on youtube i will not focus too much on the details but rather why i chose them and how they can benefit you for your experience i am by no standard an audiophile but there are a few basic things one should understand about audio. Most importantly that open back headphones have a wider sound stage because sound is not trapped inside and can exit out the back of the headphones. This often gives you better positional awareness. An example where they're approaching cars in the back of your blind spot. And as with all things in life there is a caveat to open back headphones, mainly that you will hear all sounds that enter the headphones from the outside. With a motion rig such as mine, there is a lot of noise created by the actuators, the butt kickers, wind simulation fans, and whatever you don't want to hear is that it breaks the immersion. So even if you don't have motion, simple clicks of magnetic shifters can already be heard in open headsets. So keep that in mind. For the motion rig, I use closed back headphones. But that is because I'm alone in the studio and I enjoy the luxury of having to pay no attention to anyone else. At home, when I play Escape from Tarkov, in the living room, I may have my wife yell something at me and I better be able to respond accordingly. More importantly, if one of my cats hurts themselves in another room or Amazon rings the bell, I need to be able to hear it. And apparently it's more important that Amazon rings the bell than my wife yelling at me. You can easily tell if a headphone is open or closed as usually there is a hard cover that traps the sound on closed headphones or has some sort of ventilation or a mesh on open headphone cans. Stay away from RGB headsets. As said, I'm no audiophile by any means, but it should be common sense that you are better off with a decent pair of headphones than with a gamer headset. As you hopefully know, a headset is something that has a built-in microphone. In most cases, these headphones typically offer a lot of blink, but not much sound quality as all of the money was wasted mostly on marketing rather than proper R&D. Now, my recommendation for open back headphones and probably the best value you can get for the price point is this here. Philips Fidelio X2 HR headphones, which were recommended to me by an actual audiophile who works with audio for a living. I am aware that X3 are out now, but they cost more than twice as much and you cannot modify them into a headset. Aside from the aspect that these headphones look very appealing and sound amazing, they have a very important feature that most other headphones don't. 
to have a removable cable which in turn allows us to mod these headphones into a plug and play headset. The add-on microphone is called VModa Boom Pro. It's a great sounding flexible mic that attaches in the original port from the headphones and thus creates an almost OEM like solution. I truly believe the VModa Boom Mic is a very affordable option while delivering the best quality possible at such a low price point. That thing is currently on sale on Amazon for like 30 bucks. By the way, you will find all my affiliate links down below. So before you ask me why I don't use Biodynamics DT this and DT that, it's a simple answer. Those headphones for the most part do not have a detachable cable. As I said in the beginning, once you factor in all the needs you have, the choices you have will be narrowed down significantly. If you stream your content or make YouTube videos, you may have already a professional XLR microphone solution separate from your headphones. So your needs may be different, but for sim races where you are limited in movement and possibly limited in sight because of VR, you will need a microphone that is on your headset and does not interfere with your driving. So now let me introduce you to my closed back headphones, the Sennheiser GSP 600. I know I said it, don't buy a gaming headset, but this one may be worth the exception as it is the top shelf product and while it looks futuristic, it does thankfully restrain itself from any sort of RGB lights and obviously delivers in the sound category. After all, it is a Sennheiser. The only thing I personally value most on this headset is something completely underrated, but it is an absolute godsend for VR users and that is this oversized, grippy, turning volume wheel. This is hands down the best solution for VR users as we cannot see anything outside of the headset and every other solution with separate buttons, clickers, knobs, touch dials, it's all either too small, too light or requires multiple presses and therefore distracts you for too long. I swear this is completely underrated. The ability to adjust volume in a split second while driving in VR is my favorite feature of these headphones. I'm not even kidding. The knob is so smooth, but it's not lightweight, so you cannot accidentally change volume while adjusting your VR headset. It actually re requires a decent amount of force to turn it. The rest of the features are rich, but expected on such a headset. Let's fly over them, as I am sure most YouTubers already covered it in more detail. You have an adjustable head strap with a tensioner, which is not common and great to see as it allows you to adjust the clamp force. The ear pads are very good as they won't release any volume bleed and ensure the passive noise cancellation. Those can also be wiped down, which is a very big bonus. The cable is removable, albeit it seems to be a proprietary solution, yet it does offer the benefit to release tension when accidentally pulling on the cable. So if you exit your rig and accidentally pull the headset or step on it, it will not tear off the cable and instead will just eject from the headphones. Lastly, another smart feature that matches the comfort of the volume knob is the microphone arm, which can be pushed out of the way if you don't need it. And that smart thing here is that it automatically mutes this input channel. Again, something that is truly great for sim racing as we don't talk as much as FPS players. So when you do have something to say, you can just pull the microphone down and have the setting to be always on for chat. That way you don't need to keep pressing buttons while talking. And in fact, you save a button on your steering wheel and we all know you can't have too many buttons on your steering wheel. You say what you gotta say and push it out of the way. Did that just rhyme? I understand that none of this stuff is cheap, but it is along the very best that you can buy for gaming at a reasonable level, more or less. Don't get me started on another option. There is always another option. <laughs> the headphones can go into astronomical prices, particularly Sennheisers. Fun fact, did you know that the most expensive headphones in the world are made by Sennheiser? Here, take a look at this. Yeah, no, no, no. You wish it would be 10,000 euros. The 10,000 euros you see here is the down payment for the headphones that cost a total price of 59,000 euros. So now I don't feel bad showing you my next Sennheiser product. And no, this video is not sponsored by Sennheiser.
unfortunately. After you have decided if you want open or closed back headphones, or if you already have a decent headphone set, you can make the upgrade to use a better sound card. In my case, not only did I upgrade the sound quality, but I upgraded from 2.0 to 7.1 headphone surround sound and solved the butt kicker sound card problem at the same time. Depending on your headphones, you may or may not be required to use a sound amplifier as the impedance of your headphones may ask for more power than your motherboard can handle. Many mainboards nowadays offer great sound solutions on board, however, given that most of my viewers may need to power multiple butt kickers in addition to the sound source, you will also need multiple sound cards. Anyone who has ever tried installing two sound cards onto one computer knows that it may be a pain in the to find the right combination that will harmonize within the same Windows system and not have the drivers interfere with each other. Running two of the same sound cards or even just the same brand of sound cards using the same drivers becomes impossible. The easiest way to go around it is to use an external USB sound card that has completely different drivers. If you ever watched my rant about USB devices in episode 9, you know that I hate all USB technology in general. Check the link for that in the corner if you want to see it. Having said that, my personal choice for an additional sound card is the Sennheiser GSX 1200 Pro. And yes, it is a USB sound card that I really did not want to like, but I do. And really did not want to install, but I had to. There are no drivers, no software that needs installation. It's a true plug and play USB device that does not interfere with the onboard sound cards or drivers of the mainboard. And you can switch from 2.0 to 7.1 surround sound as well as speakers with the touch of a button. So no more switching or unplugging sources. If you want more than 2.0 sound, but can't or won't invest into a true 7.1 external sound system, which can go into thousands of euros and involves further problems with neighbors and wives, then this is the way to go. This unit used to be a lot more expensive as well than it is now. So I feel like it's the best time to actually recommend something like that and especially because it solves all the other problems with installing further components. Now just briefly to fly over the main functions, let me show you around the GSX 1200 Pro model. First, let me note that there is a slightly cheaper version called GSX 1000. It is only about 15 euros cheaper. I don't see a reason why anyone would actually choose it over the 1200 professional model. Main difference here is that you can adjust the chat to in-game sound ratio and that you can link multiple units together on the pro version. To have the real-time chat audio at all times, which is obviously focused towards competitive esports. The touchscreen and overall build quality have a superior finish on both of them and the product looks and feels like no other. Now moving on to the settings. You have an equalizer function that allows four different settings. Crosshair mode for competitive shooting, a note symbol for music, a movie mode and regular default mode, which is what I prefer. I never change that setting. The next setting allows you to set front or back bias. This setting can only be operated in surround mode for obvious reasons and allows you to shift the audio focus from the back to mid to front. This is something that I actually like for sim racing because it, depending on the car that I drive, I will shift the setting accordingly. Now, if I drive a rear engine car, I'll shift the sound more towards the back. For the front engine, I'll move the sound more towards the front. In general, the setting is for games where the sound lacks rear volume for example but i use it the way it fits my needs best so for sim racing to reach maximum immersion this is what i like to do the next setting allows you to shift from 2.0 to 7.1 sound on the fly and now that i said on the fly i actually believe that this is something worth pointing out you can change sound configuration in real time with no audible delay the moment you press that it changes and there is no pulse or fade which you have on so many other devices and this makes a big deal for me because i can compare settings directly okay next up we have a side tone function this allows the microphone audio to be side toned into your headphones 
which again, for me personally, is a very big deal when used in combination with closed back headphones. If I cannot hear my own voice due to the noise cancellation of the closed back headphones, then I basically don't know what I'm saying, or I must really raise my voice or yell, and it's not really great for anyone. So all in all, this setting allows you to put your own voice back into the headphone at low, medium, or high volume. The next setting adjusts the reverb, which can help you create a wider soundstage and again is set at low, high or off. If you are forced to use closed back headphones, reverb can help you a little to create bigger sound stages. just don't overdo it. And finally, the last button allows you to change from headphones to external speakers, which is such a great option as well. All right, then there are four corner preset buttons that are touch as well. You just hold it down until it lights up white and whatever you set it is now bound to this corner preset. Lastly, you have a wheel on each side of the unit that are dedicated to the communication specifically. One is for chat volume in and the other wheel is for chat volume out. So all of your in-game communications is handled separately without having to open or adjust anything in the software. This is something quite important because very few channels actually mention that function. This is a very big deal. You can turn down the volume of your Discord buddies and turn up or down the, the microphone volume if needed on the fly. This unit creates two dedicated sound sources in Windows, one of which is a communication source and this wheel adjusts the volume directly inside Windows. How all of this works without software is a complete mystery to me, but this is something very, very great for anyone, for any gamer that has to use communications. Make sure to follow the setup instructions very carefully, adjust the audio settings and follow Sennheiser's directions for bit rates, adjust surround sound in-game and deactivate all sound enhancements in Windows. Make sure to select the Sennheiser main audio and not Sennheiser headphones when enabling the 7.1 sound, as doing this wrong will still give you audio, but not work the way it was intended and leave you disappointed. So now, every time I say butt kickers, you have a drink. Let's go. How does this solve the problem of butt kickers? And which sound card do I use for the butt kickers? Well, with the addition of the Sennheiser GSX 1200, all sound goes through USB, meaning you free up all the audio outputs on your mainboard. So it's never been easier to connect butt kickers. You just use the front audio for the front butt kickers and the rear audio ports for the rear butt kickers. If you want to use chassis mode like I have it with four butt kickers, of course you will need amplifiers to power the butt kickers. I'm sure there are many other options but the ones I use are the T-Amp E400. And you can connect two butt kickers per amp, as this is what I have to. <laughs> uh, this, you can connect two butt kickers. I'm sorry, yes, have two more. <laughs> there are other options where you can connect all four butt kickers into one amplifier, but for the longevity and the redundancy, I have them separate. I have used these amplifiers for commercial simulators and those are the only ones that have never burned out, even when in use for 15 hours a day. So just to briefly fly over it again, you set the audio channel for the butt kickers in Windows to Quadraphonic. Then in iRacing at least, you set the LFE channels to the audio source of your motherboard, the one that you don't use for headphones. Then in SimVibe, you select the sources of your motherboard audio, check that all channels are working in order. The cables go from motherboard audio out to amplifier audio in, then from amplifier audio out to the butt kickers. And that's all there is. In today's video, I've only covered the audio equipment used mainly on my sim rig. If I were to get into the speakers, microphones, mixers and all the choices for the studios and stream side of the things here, this episode will never end. Remember that a lot of my gear can be found directly on our new website, sickgamesentertainment.com. I know it's a mouthful, but just remember, sickgamesentertainment.com. I've listed all my cameras, lenses, lights, microphones, computer specs even, all of that on that site. The items are linked through uh, affiliate links to Amazon at no extra cost to you, and you can support the channel 
by shopping through that website. I'd also like to point out that anything I recommend here is something that I personally have purchased myself and I use on a daily basis. That website and this YouTube channel is also the only social media that I post to. I'm turning 40 this year and all the Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, Discord, Twitter, all the cool kid stuff is too much for me. I, I, I don't have time for this. And given that the majority of my audience is actually my age, I believe that most of you will kind of appreciate this. Be on one place. You don't, I don't need to go to 10,000 social sites. I'm here. I read every comment. If you have any questions, post them down below. All the more reason to subscribe and hit the bell button here. All right, so I guess that's it for today's episode. I've shown you my choice for open headphones, my choice for closed headphones, my choice for the second additional sound card, and the butt kicker amplifier, uh, amplifier solution. And those are, I believe, the main questions that I had, and I'm sure that many of you have, particularly the dual sound card setup and how to um, connect everything. It's actually quite easy with those solutions. Um, if you have other questions, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. As I said, I read all the comments myself and uh, I'll try to post more frequently. I'm working on a couple of projects and behind the scenes. But yeah, I wasn't kidding when, when, I, when I said that, yeah, I basically wasted like four months out of my life straight. And yeah. But I mean, you know, why, why, why would I hide it? Like, wh wh what do I have to hide? You're my viewers, <laughs> you're subscribed here. You have a right to know what I've been up to. Not much, apparently. So see you on the next one. Take care.